Hey, welcome back. So, before we move forward with the MongoDB, we'll look more into that. I just want to show you uh, a bit about the structure we're using in the Mongo database for storing our data called BSON. Um, and actually, BSON is binary JSON. So, what I will show you here is JSON instead. Uh, I don't want to go into the details of uh, BSON and JSON right now. But just understand that what you're seeing right here is actually a JSON object pulled from the database. So I'll just mark this entire area. This is a single object pulled from the student um, table or collection in our database that I pulled out here by using the find query. Okay, you can try and do the same just to see if you understand the find query. So. This is a single object and, and I can read from this JSON structure, which is the cool thing about JSON is it's human readable. So I can easily read what's in here. I can say, okay, so it starts right here with the curly bracket. That's the way JSON is, the syntax. And it ends right here with this curly bracket. So that's the JSON object. In here, it has one property called an ID and it has this value. We'll get back to that. That's something that Monko generated automatically for you. So you don't have to understand that yet. We'll figure that out later. But we had two other properties that I actually generated, which is name. So this is the string I called the property, in my case, name. It could be anything, like age and whatever. And this is the actual value that I set for that name, okay? So that's what a JSON object is. And here I have another property that's being split by this comma. And in this case, it's called age, so the string the, the name of the value is age and the value itself is 22. So let's try and add another guy here. So I'll write db.student because that's my collection that I want to insert into. And then I'll write insert because I want to insert something. Well, that makes sense. In here, I'll make a start and end curly bracket. And it's how you want to write it. I'm just used to writing my start in parentheses, start in curly brackets right away because then I don't forget them. What do we want in here? Well, we want a name of, um, what should we call this guy? Uh, Anna, that's a good name. And then we want an age for Anna, let's say um, 33. So now I've created a JSON object and I'll show you in a second why this works. So remember again, we have a curly bracket, we have the property of name and we have the value of that property, then we have a comma, and the next property, which is age, and a colon, and 33, which is the value. And I could keep going like this. I'll show you. I'll show you some more complex examples. When I press enter, I'm told something is inserted. If I do a find again, I'll actually see that now there's four JSON objects inside my student collection. Try to remember these keywords that I'm using. Collection, um, JSON, try to get them under your skin. So here she is, here's Anna, my fourth student. Here's her age. So I, again, she got an ID automatically generated from Mongo. But what is this? Let's have a look at, at json.org's explanation of what this actually is. So I'm going into json.org and first of all, JSON is short for JavaScript Object Notation. So the idea is that we can actually generate with a single string, you can generate an entire collection of whatever real life object you want in a single string. And that means you can pass that string over the internet or wherever you want, and then pull it out and read an entire object structure. That could be a list of products, that could be a list of students, like in our case, that could be anything that you wanna show and send over the wire. So here it says, to make a JSON object, you need to start with a curly bracket. If I just open our small example here, and I'll show you that on the side. So it shows that to make a JSON object, you need to start with a curly bracket right here. Then you need to put in some kind of string to define here's the first property. And in our case, the first property is called ID, then a colon, just like it says here, and then a value. And in our case, the value is actually an object ID. Let's look at the other one a name, that's the name here, and a colon, and the value. And then of course I put in a comma to show the next property. So that's how you make very basic properties for, for JSON. 
check it out. Try to insert a few students in your database and we'll be back soon where we try to dig a little deeper into this.